Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk about a powerful truth. Life is a fight for territory. Every single day you are fighting for control. Control of your mind, your goals, your dreams. And let me tell you something. If you don't claim that territory, if you don't fight for it, life will take it from you. Negative thoughts, doubts, fear, and complacency will invade your space. And before you know it, they'll control your destiny. But here's the good news. You have the power to fight back. You can stand your ground, claim your space, and build the life you've always dreamed of. The question is, are you ready to fight for your territory? Since nobody knows you quite like you, I sincerely hope you took some time to genuinely look within. You are aware of the things you need to improve. I mean, having courage was one of the key things in me that I had to drastically modify. I used to go see folks perform. I noticed speakers up on stage. I can accomplish that, my heart would declare. However, I lacked the guts to defend my own rights. I put things off for 14 years. I remained on the sidelines as a spectator for 14 years. I immediately noticed a speaker and what a bore he was. Between funerals, the place was as quiet as a cemetery. Whoa, I thought to myself, if he could do it, surely I could too. His brother-in-law was seated next to me as I witnessed what he did and he stated, you should be that boring and earn the kind of money he earned. How much are they paying, I asked. $5,000, he said. $5,000, I said. It's barely been an hour or so since he started talking. That's how much they make now, he says. Not that I was making $5,000 a month. Hold on a minute, I said. I'm sure I can accomplish that if he can. Have you previously done that? He offered me bravery. I didn't have to make that decision at that particular moment. He gave me courage by using someone who was less skilled than me as an example. I ought to have had the guts to assert myself and have faith in my own abilities. However, the reality is that I didn't. I am also unable to unravel those eggs. I'm not going to get those years back. I can never get those 14 years back. Perhaps that's why it's my favorite novel, he remarks, ignoring the past and reaching forward to the present. And keep moving in the direction of your higher calling. Strive to reach your higher callings mark, and I carry that out. That's my daily routine. I need to keep gathering the bravery. I recall entering the room to deliver a presentation to a group of teachers. I had to talk to myself because I was the only person in the room without a college degree. Les Brown, allow me to share with you something, I said as I entered the washroom. If their MBAs and PhDs signify nothing more to you than pile high and deep, then what difference does it make? They are crucial. However, I needed to gather myself. Hey, have a peek at this. You cannot enter there fearing for your possessions. Simply bring what you already own. You have seven kids that you need to look after. You have to look after your mother. You also have a point to make. You're not without talent. You are not without talent. You must have confidence in yourself. You must get to your feet. This is no time to get all punk. Now is not the time to give up. You know, you have to talk to yourself sometimes. It may turn out to be the smartest talk you've ever had with yourself. Therefore, the drastic alteration takes time to manifest. You have the power to choose. But in order to live from a place of strength, bravery, and faith, rather than as a voluntary victim, which is what most people are, you must maintain daily self-awareness. And now for something different. Obtain a partner for accountability. Find someone who shares your aims and aspirations, is like-minded and kind-hearted, and with whom you can keep each other accountable and have regular conversations. Additionally, if you are able, consider joining a mastermind group or other encouraging communities of people who are pushing and challenging themselves in an effort to better themselves. Here's another thing, it's a wise investment. Locate a coach for yourself, locate a person in your field, locate a mentor who shares your interests so you may invest in yourself and have a coach who holds you accountable. My coach is here. I invest more than $100,000 a year in either my coach or my own personal development. Why? Les Les Brown is who you are. One of the world's top five speakers was chosen to be you. The National Speakers Association and Toastmasters International presented you 
with the Hyde's honor. You are paid more than most speakers anywhere in the world. Why could you require coaching? Whenever Tiger Woods swings, you can see that he looks at the ball first, then to the right to glance at his coach. Tiger Woods is widely regarded as one of the best golfers alive. What do you need a coach for if Tiger Woods does? What's necessary for me? I know this and I can tell you that. When you are inside the frame, you cannot view the photo. When you are inside the frame, you cannot view the photo. The majority of failures can be attributed to ignorance or the mistaken belief that one knows something. According to Einstein, his current way of thinking has led to some issues that it is unable to resolve. See what brought you to this point in your life, the amount of money you possess, your degree of achievement and the expansion of your company are all results of either your best thinking or the lack thereof. Take responsibility for your actions and seek assistance. One of the things I teach is to ask for help when you want it, not because you're weak, but because you want to be strong and keep going till you succeed. Thus, give it some thought and locate a coach. Look for a courageous person who will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, and I possess that. And Mike Williams, who has been my coach for the last 38 years, I can't even begin to imagine the consequences for me. I was a disc jockey for a while, Les Brown, the urban explorer, Triple P for LB. None existed prior to me. After me, none will exist. That means that I am the only young, unique love you can have. Verified and authentic, you will be capable of satisfying yourself in a variety of ways. Baby, I was bad. Indeed, I was. This man added, Les, you're not just a record jockey. Hey dude, what are you talking about? What can you do if you can reach people with this microphone and entertain them without being able to see them? Should you be able to see them? You can empower them, educate them, and amuse them if you can. If you can dive to the bottom of the deepest ocean or climb a mountain, you can be less of a crazy person in town, the summit of the tallest peak. I'll be the talk of the town wherever you go. LB Triple P. If you are able to generate so much nonsense, what could you do if you took a seat, began to consider the situation, and wrote editorials? That is continuing to work against us. How could you encourage someone to register to vote? How could you start influencing public policy? You need to have a more expansive self-image. Mike, I never considered myself that way, I said. You know, have you ever had someone point out to you anything that you were blind to yourself? That escaped my personal observation. Perhaps that's why one of the quotes from my favorite book reads, the human heart is not entered, nor is the eye seen, nor the ear heard. God inspired me to write what he saw in me and what he has in store for you. I believed I was just a disc jockey, but he offered me a vision of who I was beyond my situation, beyond my mental conditioning, and beyond the job. I'm so glad I can use a microphone. I'm a skilled microphone user, so you can drop me in any city. I can use a microphone to completely transform a city. However, I was unaware that I was capable of more than I was expressing. And I turned into a community activist as a result of his support. He encouraged me to launch a chat program called Voice of the People, which I did. He encouraged me to run for the Ohio legislature after I left radio, and I was elected. And I passed 14 measures in my first term thanks to his encouragement. I became the chairman of the Human Resource Committee and was elected three times thanks to his encouragement. His encouragement helped me pursue my career as a public speaker. I became a writer because of his support. With his urging, I did a Les Brown concert for King World, for which I was paid $5 million, of which $2 million was for not speaking. He encouraged me to produce programs for public television, PBS. You couldn't do that, he said. You're not a college graduate. It's television for education. He encouraged me to try a lot of things that I never would have thought I was capable of. I urge you to have a rich life and a purposeful death. You're capable of more than just putting in the minimal amount of effort and getting paid enough to keep you from quitting your job and getting fired. 
As soon as you decide to make a drastic change in a crucial area of your life, opportunities will start to present themselves to you. And now for the other really essential point. After you've determined what your objective is, I'd like you to try to get a visual representation of it. Buying my mother a house was my main objective. I saw the photo of the house on the golf course with the basketball court and 12-foot swimming pool. My mother sold that house to me, a little over $400,000. Long before I had the cash and the down payment to purchase it, 10,000 had a picture. My objective was to become a well-known speaker both domestically and abroad. That was my aim. On one side of the card I was holding it said, ask and you shall find. There will be open knocking. On the other hand, I've got, I am the best orator in the world. In my life I achieved that outcome. My dream job was to host discussion shows. I used to watch Phil Donahue and I used to put my photo on the TV. I imagined myself there while I listened to the broadcast. I was contacted by King World Production and had my own talk show. In other words, it was the fastest canceled talk show in television history with the highest rating. At least I had one though, we call it life. And now for something different. You cannot succeed by failing yourself. I promise you that. You will fail your way to success even though you can experience a great deal of disappointment and failure. That which does not kill you, according to Goethe, will make you stronger. You see, 85% of people let their fear of failing take precedence over their drive for achievement. You must thus possess great courage. You must possess bravery. Try to land on your back when life knocks you down. After all, if you can look up, you can get back up. After deciding on a goal, you should gather some supplies, create a goal board or treasure board, and take images of the objective you wish to accomplish. You are programming your subconscious mind, which is where nine out of 10 of the decisions you make so you can see it every day when you get up and as you close your eyes at night. And now for something different. You want a tangible image that you can look at every day to serve as a reminder and to help you stay on track. But you also want to write down your goals in detail and have seven daily action steps that will help you get there. By the yard it's difficult, but inch by inch, everything is this inch you want to think about, according to Robert Schuller. What tasks must I complete each day? Divide it into manageable chunks. In addition to your 30-day goals, you also have goals for the next three, six, and one months. Okay, so you want to do it one step at a time. What steps do you need to do as of right now? Never waste any time. A second passes. Another second has passed. Another second has passed. And it cannot be restored with all the power in the world. What are the seven actions you can do to start today? After completing those seven tasks, you work on the remaining tasks. However, which are the seven most crucial actions that you can perform to go toward your objective? And I started learning quotes by heart every day when I made the decision to become a speaker. That was among the objectives. I had to commit quotes to memory. I think I have between 400 and 500 quotes and figures in my head covering a wide range of topics. I've given a speech at real estate conventions across the country. Remax. I've represented attorneys and physicians. Last year I gave over 5,000 doctors training on how to talk to their patients to encourage them to take their hypertension medicine, which resulted in a 30% increase in compliance. In one month I received $640,000 in pay. 30, 30 minutes a day, Monday through Thursday. Many people labor for a whole year without doing that. Not to impress you, but to impress upon you is what I mean when I say that. You are capable of greatness. You are capable of far more than you could ever think. I was unaware that there was a final round of UC. I was completely ignorant. You know deep down that you are capable of doing even more than I have, which is why you are watching me right now. As you start considering that, Consider outlining your objectives in paper, putting inspirational messages on repeat, improving and transforming your relationships, considering the seven tasks that must be completed each day. You have to make some significant changes to yourself. An old African adage states that the adversary outside cannot harm us if there is no enemy within. And now for something else really, 
really crucial. Following up on our discussion of hiring a personal coach, this is another crucial component of achieving your objectives. Looking back, what is it about your history that is still having an impact on you now? I saw the movie Magnolia, and it had a really strong line. The film also made the point that even though we may have moved past our past, it still affects us. Whoa, allow me to tell you about something. I became aware of myself. I put off doing things for 14 years because in the fifth grade, Miss Mary Ford Williams told Miss Crompton, he doesn't belong here. Unlike his brother, he is slow. They moved me down to the fourth grade from the fifth grade. That had an impact on me. I was completely unaware of it. It's said that bones can be broken by sticks and stones. However, words cannot harm you. They can and often will liberate you up. For I will always remember the day I met Mr. Washington. I was a junior in high school at the time. Throughout my whole high school career, starting in the fourth grade, I received special education instruction. Every year, my twin brother was on the honor roll and he said, young man, please solve this for me. He was a brand new teacher. I answered, it's not possible, sir. Why not, he asked. I said that I'm not. Look at me, one of your students stated. Sure, sir, let's solve the issue. Anyway, because I am intellectually handicapped and incapable of doing what you have requested me to do, sir, I will not serve you. And there was a chuckle among the pupils. Hey, he's DT, they said. What is that, he asked. He is the less intelligent twin. Leslie is Wesley, not him. And he responded, don't ever say that again, emerging from behind his desk. You don't have to accept someone else's perception of you as true. That was a startling admission. It was a liberating and humiliating experience all at once. He simply got worse because he was staring at me with Goethe's eyes, which said, look at a man day the way that he is. However, observe him as though he were what he could be. Then he realizes his true potential. And from that encounter, I discovered the following. I want you to picture yourself there already. Whatever your aspirations and goals may be, view the entire image. Imagine yourself there. Why? The reticular activating system is located at the base of our brains. You see, you are a genius. And allow me to illustrate with an example. I mentioned the other night that I had to wake up at 7 a.m. the next morning. I was in a lodging facility. I instructed them to call me at 7 a.m. when I called downstairs. I woke up at 7 in the morning on the nose because the motel forgot to do it. Have you previously done that? How did you determine when to stand up? Hey, that subconscious mind of ours has all the answers we need right there. Have you ever thought, you know what? After seeing someone, I can't quite place it, but I remember your face. And then you remark, hey, I know where I saw you afterwards. And it appeared. What took place? The subconscious mind received that concept from the conscious mind, dug through the material, and provided it to you. Upon forming a clear image of your desired outcome, you trigger the activation of the reticular activating system. It is a base of brain cells that resembles a network. Allow me to explain how it operates to you. Have you ever bought an automobile? Nobody purchases a car in the same color as everyone else. Have you experienced something similar before? However, as soon as you drive the vehicle from the lot after purchasing it, you begin to see it everywhere. Hey, where'd this come from, you ask? Allow me to explain what took place. You committed to something. Additionally, the fact that you invested aroused your consciousness and activated your reticular activating system. One more example to illustrate the point. My friend and I were dancing at a party where the music was really good. Wait a minute, my son is wailing, she said. He's standing at the entrance. I told him, that even if your son were at the door, you wouldn't be able to hear him. She came to a stop, proceeded to the door, and opened it only to find her four-year-old son standing there. How was it heard by her, and it escaped my ears? And the other dancers, no, that wasn't our kid. It was her offspring. He whimpered, and her reticular activating system heard it. You already possess that, I'm telling you. The reticular activating system will be stimulated when you concentrate on and imagine achieving your objectives and desires. This will take you to your destination while implementing all the other recommendations we made. 
Not only is it possible for you to give up on your dream now, but it's also imperative that you make relationship changes, hire a coach, meet with accountability partners, write down your goals, and follow a daily schedule of seven steps to track your progress. However, you must accept complete responsibility. It's okay if everything works out for you. Okay, if you have the cash. It would be fantastic if you could enlist the aid and support of your spouse, friends, and family. All of those things, though, are insignificant if you don't. You have the primary key to achieving your objectives. No one will put in more effort than you to pursue your dream. On that one, believe me, it will not happen unless you accept responsibility for it. It's okay if it occurs right after you leave the gate. So what if you don't succeed? Return time and time again and again and again. If it's your passion or something you love doing, stick with it until the end. According to George Bernard Shaw, successful people search for the conditions they desire in life. And they make them if they are unable to locate them. And now for something different. It's challenging. They did when I purchased my mother's first house. I neglected to conduct a title search, which resulted in a lawsuit against me. I was forced to relocate from the grand exquisite house I had purchased for her to a roach infested one. Whereupon my neighbor said, Mamie, are you back? Indeed. What took place? The house was lost by my boy. We had to leave since he neglected to conduct a title search. The residence was foreclosed upon. The person who had placed a lien on the property was not going to get paid $50,000 by him. It was utterly disastrous. Let me tell you something though. Given that I returned 90 days later, it was worthwhile. 90 days later, I had a bigger and better house. I didn't waver from my objective. And that's what you should aim to accomplish. Remain committed to your objective. Hold upon the basic idea, the primary factor. There will be things to divert you. That is a step in the procedure. It isn't intended to deter you. It exists just to test you. Through it, you desire to develop. You know, I believe it was Robert Schultz who stated that although hard times don't last, people do. Hold upon the basic idea, the primary factor, you're having a terrible time. Continue. Continue your journey. Continue traveling. Don't pause to discuss it. Continue your journey. That's what the game is all about. Continue to swing. Paul Newman and Luke Cool. Hand Luke is one of my favorite films. I'm not sure if you've seen the movie. But there's a scene in which the cool guy fights a guy. God, that massive dude kept bringing him down. That just continued bringing him down, bam, da. The cool hand would rise. He would bring him down, whoa. And quite soon the guys would sense something inside, like cool hand, stay down, remain down. Luke would get back up with a cool hand. Guy would take him out, whoa. The man says, man, stay down, remain down. The cool hand would rise once more. He was knocked down by the person. Whoa, the man eventually became weary of knocking down cool hands. And a cool hand raised itself. Even after everyone had left, he continued to swing and sway in the wind. He was the only person present. And that's me, Luke, the cold hand. Luke, you want to be that cool hand. If you continue to swing, the universe will give in to your desires. Angels will be sent to your aid and tell you to back off. Accord him what he desires. Give it to her as she requests. Today, let's go locate a wimp. That's just how life works. Though difficult, is it worthwhile? For you, what will make it worthwhile? As Nietzsche once observed, you can undo almost anything if you know the wife of living. Please take a moment to jot down 12 reasons why you will succeed. For when the bad times come, and they will come when life blindsides you and that's going to happen, your kids start acting out, or someone you thought you'd be married to for the rest of your life decides they want a life divorce as I did, what is it that you can endure? Your staff and rod will be your justifications for solace and assistance during that period. I can confirm that it is feasible. You are able to fulfill your dreams. It is essential that you set down your goals and strive toward them every day, as well as that you surround yourself with people from whom you may learn and develop, that your thoughts are made up. I'm gonna succeed.
It's imperative that you continue to improve yourself. Attending seminars and workshops, investing in oneself, reading and hearing encouraging content, hiring a coach. And in order to make it happen, you must accept personal responsibility. Avoid considering yourself a victim. It's also challenging. It's challenging. Life changing is difficult. It's difficult to get up and work when you're hurt. It's challenging. When you work hard to achieve your goals and provide for your family, you come home to a living hell where you have to fight for your home base and refresh yourself on all levels, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It's challenging to be positive. It's challenging. Furthermore, nobody sees the vision. They don't think highly of you. Oh, you can count on me, they say. Moreover, they are absent. All they did was lie. They only show up when you're needed. It's challenging. I can assure you that the sacrifice you must make is worthwhile. My personal experience has shown me that it is worthwhile. Take some time to jot down the 12 reasons you have for not giving up. For you, what will make it worthwhile? And as soon as you do, your life will start to pick up steam. After that, it's finished, it's finished. Insert a fork into it, it's finished. I would like you to bear this in mind. Life is a struggle for dominance. There is a battle for land. And what you don't want will take over naturally if you stop fighting for what you want. I'd like you to peruse that. I want to be committed to memory. Place it somewhere you can see it, please. I would like you to remember it. Life is a struggle for dominance. Additionally, once, what you don't want will take over automatically the moment you give up fighting for what you desire. After your battle for financial independence is over, I no longer have cancer. I have no debt and no drama. I possess the faith to summon those things that do not appear to be as they actually are. I'm battling for mental tranquility. I'm battling for my liberty. I am battling for the future generations of my children. I'm working hard to make tomorrow better. I'm struggling to change the course of life. I'm struggling to leave my mark, to leave my print. I will not give up and cease to exist. And you are currently engaged in that activity. You're telling yourself, I won't pass away without having lived. My life should have meaning. I want my existence to have purpose. I wish to avoid burdening anyone. I want to write my own check, be in charge of my own destiny, and accomplish whatever it is that I want to do. To follow my own desires and not worry about pleasing anyone else but myself. That's how things are for you. You're merely observing me because we share a common background. We belong to the same tree as branches. The only thing that motivates you to spend your time, money, and energy is this. Just stay still for now and concentrate. Since you are aware of me in your heart, your treasure is found where your heart resides. A man is what he thinks in his heart. And I tell you to remember what I said, life is a struggle for dominance and what you don't want will take over naturally if you stop fighting for what you want. I adore something Jim Rowan said, when the time for you to die arrives, may it find you scaling a new mountain rather than falling off an old one, he added. No, life is far too brief and uncertain. Eat the dessert first, as Helen Keller would say. Make sure you don't end up sliding down the same mountain. I'm not sure what your objectives are, I have no idea what dreams you have. What I know about you is as follows. You are capable of greatness. Even though I don't even know you, this is what I know about you. However, from my personal perspective, you were picked specifically for a reason. A single spur among 400 million. You are capable of greatness, but one can choose to be great. It's not meant to be. You have to make this decision each and every day. Today, decide who you will serve the inferior aspect of who you are or the excellence for which you were selected. This is the infant boy that Mamie Brown misses. I hope this has been of some use to you. It's been a privilege as well as a very satisfying pleasure. May God reward you. May your dream be blessed by God. And may God continue to bless you for your achievements. We need you now more than the world needs you. Thus it is. Remember, life is a constant battle for territory. You're either taking ground or losing it. There's no standing still. If you want success, if you want to achieve your dreams, you have to be willing to fight for it every day. Fight against the distractions. Fight against the doubts. Fight against the fear that tells you 
you can't. As you go forward, claim your territory. Don't let anything or anyone take it from you. Stand firm in the belief that your dreams, your goals, and your life are worth fighting for. You have the power within you to win this fight, to claim the life you want, and to keep pushing forward. So today, make the decision to fight for your territory. Don't let life take from you what you know you deserve. Thank you. And may you always have the courage, strength, and determination to fight for the territory of your dreams.